Greetings. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And greetings and welcome to another story time with Dr. Tinsley. I hope all is well today. It is Saturday, April the 11th. And uh, I've been bringing stories with you, to you for over three weeks now. Um, looking forward to it each day. And I have two stories to share with you today. Um, <clears throat> one is a shorter story, which I'll read first. Uh, and, I, you know, again, I hope everyone is doing well. I hope um, I reach you today in good spirits. I hope the children are being busy at home. You're keeping them active and keeping them busy. And we just continue. This is a, a holy weekend for many people. So for those celebrating Passover, blessed Passover. And for those celebrating Easter, happy Easter to you. So the first story <clears throat> that I'm going to share is by Don Freeman. And it's a pocket for corduroy. I wish I had the book corduroy to read first and then the pocket, but. A pocket for corduroy. Late one Sunday afternoon, Lisa and her mother took their laundry to the laundromat. As always on such trips, Lisa carried along her toy bear corduroy. The laundromat was a very busy place at this hour. Now, Corduroy, you sit right here and wait for me, Lisa said. I'm going to help with our wash. Corduroy waited patiently. Then he suddenly perked up his ears. Lisa's mother was saying, be sure to take everything out of your pockets, Lisa, dear. You don't want your precious things to get all wet and soapy. Pocket, said Corder to himself, I don't have a pocket. He slid off his chair. I must go find something to make a pocket out of, he said, and he began to look around. First, he came to a, a pile of fancy towels and washcloths, but nothing was the right size or color. Then he saw a huge stack of colorful clothes in a laundry bag. There ought to be something in there to make a pocket out of, he said. Without hesitating, he climbed inside the bag, which was filled with pieces of wet laundry. The dampness didn't bother Corduroy in the least. This must be a cave, he sighed. He said, sighing happily. I've always wanted to live in a dark, cool cave. When the time came for Lisa to fetch her bear, he was gone. Oh, mommy, she explained, exclaimed. Corduroy isn't here where I left him. I'm sorry, honey, said her mother, but the laundromat will be closing soon and we must be getting home. Lisa was reluctant to leave without corduroy, but her mother insisted. You can come back tomorrow, she said. I'm sure he will still be here. As they left, a young man wearing an artist beret was taking his wet laundry out of a bag, the very bag corduroy had discovered. Before he knew it, corduroy was being tossed together with all the sheets, shirts, shorts, and slacks. inside the dryer but just as the artist was shutting the glass door corduroy tumbled out onto the floor how in thunder did that bear ever get mixed up with all my things the artist wondered poor corduroy was damp all over the least i can do is give his overalls a good drying said the man thoughtfully he unbuttoned corduroy's shoulder straps and put his overalls in the dryer
Corduroy grew dizzy as he watched the clothes spinning around, but the artist became inspired. This will make a wonderful painting, he said, as he took a sketch pad out of his pocket and began drawing the swirling colors. I can hardly wait to get back to my studio. Finally, the dryer stopped whirling and the man gathered up the clothes. Then he helped Corduroy put on his warm, dry overalls. All at once, the manager called out, closing time, everybody out. Corduroy was gently placed on top of a washing machine. I wonder who that bear belongs to, said the artist as he was leaving. Seems to me he should have his name someplace. He's too fine a fellow to be lost. As soon as the lights were turned off, Corduroy began his search again. He was surprised to see something white glowing in the dark. Maybe it's snow, he said excitedly. I've always wanted to play in the snow. He accidentally tipped the open lidded box and suddenly he was covered with soft, slippery soap flakes. Gradually, Corduroy began to slip and slide. Oh, what fun, he said with a smile. I've always wanted to ski down a steep mountainside. He landed paws first in an empty laundry basket. This must be a cage, he said, peeking through the bars. I've never wanted to live in a cage like a bear in the zoo. But by now, Corduroy felt drowsy, and soon he nodded off to sleep. Next morning, when the manager came to open the door of the laundromat, there was Lisa waiting. I left something here yesterday, she exclaimed. May I explain? May I look around? Certainly, said the manager. My co customers are always leaving things. Lisa was searching under the chairs and in the back of the washing machines when she heard the manager call her. Is this what you're looking for, senorita? Yes, yes. He's my best friend, shouted Lisa as she came running. He, she reached in and picked Corduroy out of the basket. So this is where you've been, you little rascal, she said. It's time I took you home. Lisa thanked the manager and ran out the door and down the street, holding Corduroy tightly in her arms. I thought I told you to wait for me, she said. Why did you wander away? I went looking for a pocket, Corduroy said. Oh, Corduroy, why didn't you tell me you wanted a pocket? asked Lisa, giving him an affectionate squeeze. The very next morning, Lisa sewed a pocket on Corduroy's overalls. And here is a card I've made with your name on it for you to keep tucked inside, she said. I've always wanted a purple pocket with my name tucked inside, said Corduroy, as he and Lisa nuzzled noses. And that, my dear listeners, is the end of A Pocket for Corduroy by Don Freeman. So I hope everyone enjoyed that story. Hello, Aunt Carol. And I see my cousin Cheryl. Hello to Cheryl in sunny Florida. I'm jealous. <laughs> hope all is doing well. I'm trying to see if I can see who is actually on this read aloud as I do it, but I can't. So at any rate, if anyone else has logged on, um, welcome to you as well. Our second story is, I think, the last book I have by Faith Ringo, and it's called The Invisible Princess. So I've shared many of her stories. I want to show you one. Do I have it here? But I'm not going to read it because it's not a, it's not a good book to read online. But for younger children, she has Cassie's Word Quilt, and it's an alphabet book. And I'm not going to read this, but I'll just show you. But for any young children... Uh, Faith Ringo's Cassie's Word Quilt is another great story. So the final book that I bring to you today is The Invisible Princess by Faith Ringo. Hi, Aunt Carol. I see you. Who else is there that is? Hey, Chris. 
How Passy's you, work oh, book. Oh my goodness. And it's an alphabet book. I mean, and I'm not going to read this, but I'll just show you. But for any young children. Oh, sorry about that. I told you I'm not good navigating this. Hey, Chris. I'm Carol and Cheryl. So here we go. The Invisible Princess. Long ago, in the tiny village of Visible, way down in the deep, deep south, there lived two slaves called Mama and Papa Love. They were called that because of the great love they had for children, though they had never had any of their own for fear that Captain Pepper, the mean old slave master, would sell their child and destroy their loving family. <clears throat> One day, the great lady of peace came to tell Mama Love that in spite of all her fears, she was soon to have a baby girl who would be so beautiful that she would be the envy of all who saw her. The great lady of peace promised that this little girl will grow up to be a princess who would bring, bring peace, freedom, and love to the slave's village of Visible. Mama Love was very happy, but she was frightened too, for she knew that if Captain Pepper got wind of this, he would want to make the baby princess a slave. So Mama Love begged the great lady of peace to hide her baby and protect her freedom. And so the great lady of peace asked the prince of night to conceal the beautiful princess in his great cloak of darkness and keep her forever safe from human eyes. On the morning the baby was to be born, the sun shone brightly and the flowers blossomed and the birds sang sweetly and the bees swarmed and buzzed in chorus and everyone in the slave's tiny village of Visible could feel a strange sense of peace and love that they had never felt before. As the beautiful baby princess came into the world, the Prince of Night appeared and spread his great black cloak across the sky, turning day into the blackest night. The sudden darkness woke the terrible Storm King, who flew into a thunderous rage, releasing tumultuous rains and hurricane winds on the village of Visible. It was during this storm that the Prince of Night wrenched the beautiful newborn baby from Mama Love's arms and disappeared with her tiny body into the stormy night. <clears throat> From that day on, Mama Love, Papa Love, and all the slaves in the village of Visible mourned the loss of the beautiful baby princess. They made a secret shine in the cotton fields to her memory. They, they went there each day to remember the promise the great Lady of Peace had made to them. Captain Pepper's plantation was known as the richest and most beautiful plantation in the South. Although both white people and black people lived there, all the black people were slaves who worked from sunup till sundown for no pay, lived in broken down shacks, wore rags, and only had discarded scraps of food from the slave master's table to eat. On the other hand, all the white people wore splendidly tailored clothes, ate fine foods, and lived in beautiful houses. They sent their children to school while the slave children worked all day in the cotton fields and were forbidden to read or write. One day, Patience, Captain Pepper's blind daughter, was playing in the cotton fields and saw a little girl her own age. It made her so surprised and happy that she could see the girl that she ran home and told her father. Patience, my little blossom, you cannot see, said Captain Pepper. But father, said Patience, I can see her. What does she look like, asked Captain Pepper. She has nut brown skin, shiny brown eyes, long black curls, and the most beautiful smile, said Patience. Everything around her glows. I know she must be a princess. Do you, don't you believe me, father? No, growled the mean old slave master. I've never seen a beautiful slave and neither, and neither have you. 
You must promise me never to go to the cotton fields again. But why, father, asked Patience. Your mother was struck by lightning in those cotton fields during the terrible storm, roared Captain Pepper. But why was mother there, asked Patience. She said she went to see a miracle, replied Captain Pepper. Mother went to see the beautiful princess who was born in the cotton fields, didn't she, father, asked Patience. No, screamed the captain, enough about this invisible princess. Yes, father, said Patience, thinking to herself, this is just who she is, not a slave but an invisible princess. Captain Pepper didn't want Patience to know it, but he had heard about the beautiful baby who had been born to Mama Love in the cotton fields, and now he was beginning to believe it. But, but, but could there really be a beautiful slave, an invisible princess? Well, if there is, that slave is mine, shouted Captain Pepper, and I will find her. Captain Pepper summoned his overseers to search the cotton fields, the slave shacks, and all the surrounding woods to find the invisible princess. But she was nowhere to be found. Captain Pepper was convinced that the slaves were hiding the princess from him. He vowed to punish them by selling Mama Love and Papa Love to different plantations so far apart that they would never see each other again or their beautiful invisible princess. Hearing her father's vow, Patience went to warn the invisible princess that her parents were in danger. I can see you, whispered Patience. You are the beautiful princess who was born in the cotton fields. My mother came to see the miracle of your birth but she was struck by lightning during the terrible storm and later died. Some people think you died too, but I know you are alive because I can see you even though I am blind. And now my father, Captain Pepper knows too, and he is trying to find you. He has threatened to sell mama and papa love so that they will never see you or each other again. The invisible princess realized she had to warn her parents. She found Mama and Papa Love praying at the shrine. I have come here to help you, she said. The great lady of peace saved me just as you asked her to, Mama. But now you and Papa Love are in danger, she said. Captain Pepper has threatened to sell you to plantations far away. She went on tugging at her mother's apron. Oh, my beautiful daughter, we have prayed to see you again. Tell us what happened to you, pleaded Mama Love. On the day I was born, the Prince of Night hid me in his great black cloak of darkness. And during the terrible storm, he carried me away so that no one saw me leave. I was afraid, Mama, but the Prince of Night is very gentle and he quickly replaced my fears with restful sleep. Who is the Prince of Night? asked Papa Love. He escaped from a slave ship by turning day into night. He is coal black and very handsome, Mama, and he is rich too. His cloak is studded with diamonds that sparkle like stars. If pa Captain Pepper could see him, he would try to make him a slave, but no one can ever see the Prince of Night. You were just a newborn baby when we lost you. Where have you been, asked Papa Love. The great powers of nature take care of me, Papa. The giant of the trees made me a beautiful castle high up in his branches. And the dream queen visits me each night and brings me sweet, sweet dreams of freedom, Papa. Dreams that one day will come true. The sun goddess wakes me each morning with fresh fruits and vegetables and keeps my days warm and beautiful. The sea queen brings me fresh water to drink and bathes me in mountain springs. The great lady of peace teaches me to be loving, strong, and wise. And the queen of bees brings me fresh baked honey cakes made with her special honey to keep me invisible. I am not afraid of Captain Pepper because his power to destroy is no match against the creative powers of the Prince of Night, the giant of the trees, the dream queen, 
the sun goddess, the sea queen, the great lady of peace, the queen of bees, and all the other wonderful powers of nature who have come to help us, said the invisible princess. At that, the great powers of nature made themselves heard. Hear, hear, they chorus. No one will harm any of you ever again. And from this day on, all the slaves of the village of Visible will be free. But Captain Pepper is a very mean and powerful slave master. How can we ever be free of him? Asked Mama and Papa Love. I will make a batch of fresh baked honey cakes with my special bittersweet honey, said the Queen of Bees. Anyone who is stung by my bees and then eats my fresh baked honey cakes will become invisible. And I will spread my great black cloak over the day and make it into the blackest night, said the Prince of Night and the slaves of the village of Visible will disappear. Then the invisible village of peace, freedom, and love will be born to the great lady of peace. The next morning in the slaves village of Visible, great bowls of fresh baked, fresh baked honey cakes were left at the doors of all the slave shacks. A mighty army of bees led by the queen herself swarmed through the cotton fields and stung the slaves who then fled to their shacks and seeing the bowls of fresh baked honey cakes ate their fill and became invisible. Then Captain Pepper discovered that not only was no one working in the cotton fields or in the plantation houses, but also that Patience, his beloved daughter, was gone too. Patience, Patience, roared Captain Pepper. Where are you? Come to me at once. But patients had been in the cotton fields and had been stung and had eaten the fresh baked honey cakes and was now in the invisible village of peace, freedom, and love. There she could see the sun in the skies and the flowers in the fields and the trees in the forest and the people everywhere. And she was happier than she had ever been before. Captain Pepper went every day to the deserted cotton fields in search of patients. But all he could find were bowls of stale honey cakes with bees swarming everywhere. Captain Pepper could not hold back his tears as he cried out in grief for the loss of his only child and in repentance for all the cruelty and pain he had brought to the lives of his slaves. The great lady of peace hearing Captain Pepper's cries of remorse came to his aid. Patience, the invisible princess, and all your former slaves have a new life in the invisible village of peace, freedom, and love, where everyone is free and lives in peace, said the great lady of peace. To be allowed to go there, you must be stung by the bees and eat the fresh baked honey cakes. Then you too will be carried to the invisible village of peace, freedom, and love. There you will lose all desire to enslave and inflict misery on others. You have only a few minutes to decide. Oh, please, great lady, let the bees sting me, cried Captain Pepper. I'm ready to go and live in peace. After, after Captain Pepper was stung by the bees, he gobbled up the fresh baked honey cakes and the Prince of Night appeared and spread his great black cloak, turning day into the darkest night. As a terrible storm circled the village, there were loud cracking sounds and the heavens split. And the giant of the trees bowed his head and lifted Cap Captain Pepper up, up, up above the jet black clouds of night into the invisible village of peace, freedom, and love. Patience was there with the invisible princess, mama love and papa love, and all the men, women, and children who had been slaves in the cotton field and in the plantation houses and who were now free. There was music and dancing and storytelling and everyone was happy forever after. Whenever you hear the bee buzzing of bees and you smell fresh baked honey cakes and then suddenly day becomes dark as night and a terrible storm circles a village, you can be sure that an invisible vi village of peace, 
freedom and love has been born and that an invisible princess lives there. There are many such villages all over the world. And if you listen very carefully, you can hear the people of the villages singing. We live in a peaceful village of freedom and love and harmony with our brothers and sisters by all the stars above. We live in a beautiful village full of happiness and joy, dedicated to the freedom of every man and woman and every girl and boy. And that my dear friends is the invisible princess. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, so hi on Carol and Chris and Bonnie. Uh, you're welcome. You know, it's interesting because this book is all about unity, right? So I noticed some of the people that logged on while I was reading my homeboy, Shago. Hey, Shago. I can't see who's on now. Um, yes, on Carol, a message of hope. Because, you know, I say in my diversity training, we may have came here on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. We have to learn how to get along with one another, regardless of our race, our color, our language, our ethnicity, our background, our gender, who we love, where we live. We have to figure it out because if we don't work together in unity, we will perish in dysfunction. Um, hello to my friend Bright from Ghana. I saw that he logged on and Jenny from uh, Florida. Um, and so I can't see everybody that logs on, but sometimes the names pop up and I can see them. I like to acknowledge people that log on. I'm trying to see if I can see y'all on my phone at the same time. But I hope you enjoyed the stories. And it's really about being wise in this day and time and being safe, making safe decisions and finding ways to support one another from your home. So I just want to share because many of my girlfriends and I tomorrow we're having a virtual game night. So we're gonna play categories on Zoom. So we have to all think of different ways that we can work together and support one another and the children. Okay, so I hope everyone has a blessed day. Um, and uh, again, uh, a safe weekend. And I will see you tomorrow uh, on Easter, on, your, on Easter Sunday for those who celebrate that. But tomorrow, same time, same place, five o'clock. In the meantime, wash your hands, wash your hands and faith over fear. Let's be faithful, keep our faith strong. That means stay prayed up, meditate, just do deep breathing. Just take some time to be quiet. This is a time to me, the universe is saying, let's take a pause. It's time for a pause. It's time to be still. It's time to be settled. It's time to just be still and let this virus work itself out so that we can resume life hopefully and prayerfully more peaceful and more in harmony and more in love and more in unity with one another. Because this virus shows us that we are all, this is an equal opportunity virus. It's not affecting us. Let me say this. It's not affecting us the same because there are underlying medical conditions and there are underlying factors. So in the black community, stress has always been a major factor of our life since our arrival in this country. So it is impacting people differently, but it is an equal opportunity virus. So we all have to practice uh, common sense and good caution. With that said, enjoy your day and have a blessed day. Peace.